has been called by many names. Oh. But none is more special and more precious to us than the beloved. Friends, please help me welcome this morning our spiritual leader, our senior pastor, Reverend John Scott, the beloved, to bring us this morning's encouragement. Oh, thank you, <laughs> it's very nice. Good morning, friends. It is a joy to, to welcome you to my heart and to this beautiful Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living on a warm Sunday morning in the merry month of May. And to say to those who watch us on the World Wide Web and listen on the internet, we welcome you to beautiful Jamaica in this particular wonderful Sunday morning. I owe the inspiration for today's encouragement to a white porcelain photo frame given to me by my, go my goddaughter Yeshima some years ago. It is inscribed with the words, scatter joy, which perfectly describes her way of being in the world. And since she celebrated her birthday yesterday, I have titled my encouragement, scatter joy. Isn't it funny how sometimes when the universe wants you to pay attention to something, it bombards you with messages through a variety of channels? This has been happening to me a lot recently with regards to joy. Actually, it started last Christmas when I was rearranging various objects around the house that were called by my late mother dust gatherers. And I was trying to put away some of them because the place was just too full of stuff and I came across the photo frame. Then at our January New Year workshop, I started to write an intention, as I always do, to be a channel for God's perfect love. But instead of the word love, I found myself writing the word joy. So I decreed that 2015 would be for me the year of joy. So what is this quality, this feeling called joy? The Oxford Concise Dictionary defines joy, and I quote, of a vivid emotion of pleasure or gladness, a thing that causes delight, unquote. But over and above a thing or things that cause delight, joy is the most natural state of being for us. And yet too many people have lost sight of the concept of pure joy and have settled for a lesser form of happiness. A form of happiness, perhaps, that sometimes depends on other things. Whether your hair look good and you're having new extensions, or your fingernails have been done, or you have a new dress or a new suit to wear. So many of us live out our days also in fear of what will happen next, or in regret for what has happened yesterday, thereby enabling fear to rob us of the divine joy that is our birthright. So my question for you this morning, friends, is are you able to let go of everyday concerns that so easily take priority over the joy in your soul? Do you know what is keeping you from the joy you so richly deserve? Now, I'm not saying that we don't have to deal with the ups and downs of everyday life. We all do. The ins and outs and the ups and downs. But we can learn to look at the world from the point of view and jo of joy. And this is what I want to explore with all of you this morning. There is a kind of a peaceful feeling associated with living life from the perspective of joy, isn't there? This peace enables you to be at one with your inner and outer selves, as well as with the entire universe. And when you achieve this, this sense of oneness, a joyous energy radiates from your soul, and this energy coupled with a frame of peace makes it possible for you to transcend any turmoil that may be swirling around you. This is something that Reverend Michael Record and, and I have found while working at the Adult Correctional Center here in Kingston, Jamaica. Many of the participants in the 12-week courses we facilitate seem to have found a point of personal peace and security as a result of truly feeling joyful on the inside. 
Their joy is bold and unabashed and evidently overcomes the anxieties that arise in everyday prison life. And although they embrace many different religious and denominational belief systems, they exude a kind of, I want to call it a spiritual purity, perhaps, and serenity, which transcends religion and is truly joyous. You know, friends, when I see these men carrying around the small covered plastic containers in which they collect their meals, I'm reminded that instead of being caught up in acquiring still more possessions or being annoyed because one of the 200 dinner plates that I must have from my mother, um, what she left and what I've acquired over the years and what I've got at auctions that I know I really don't need, one gets a chip and it spoils my whole day, you know. Oh, but you know how long I've had this? And now look at this, you chip it. Sounds familiar to you? <laughs> You can't find one earring. You have one dozen, one million other earrings, but you can't find one this morning, and it spoils the whole day. You don't even feel to come to church. <laughs> They're not here, no. They're looking for the earring, or the one foot of socks. There it is. Sometimes all we need to do is to expand our appreciation for what is already ours. Many of those men walking around at Tower Street, all they have is that plastic utility box with a cover, with a lid, in which they can put their lunch to eat something after class before they get locked out away for the day, for the evening. Sometimes it's the size of a, of a I can't believe it's not butter container, you know. I believe it was the 19th century American writer Henry Van Dyke who said, and I quote, happiness is inward and not outward. And so it does not depend on what we have, but on what we are. Happiness does not depend on what we have, but on what we are. I want you just to think about that. To find deep inner joy, we also need to let go of preconceived notions of how we ought to be or how we should feel and tune in to the childlike joy that is inherent within us. This week, then, I want you to try paying attention to children and their joy at just being alive. The simplest discovery can become an object of wondrous beauty when viewed through the eyes of a child. The story is told of a little girl about age seven from a humble home who on her way home from school one afternoon noticed something shiny lying on the sidewalk. When she picked it up, she found it was a broken neck chain. She held it up to the sun and it sparkled beautifully. So she took it home and presented it to her overworked and overwrought mother saying, the way it sparkles reminds me of your smile, mama. You can imagine how touched the harassed mom must have been and how the little girl also felt good about the gift for many days after. So such a simple gesture can create so much joy in the giver and in the receiver. Then there is the joy of simply being alive. Laughter, music, a proud moment, these are all times in which joy seems to come naturally. We must relearn to allow ourselves to feel this emotion without first needing the stimulation that brings it into focus easily. In the face of all the apparent violence and chaos in the society, one of the ways we can save ourselves is by paying attention and responding to the inherent feelings of simple and pure joy at just being alive. When we allow this emotion to take precedence over ego, over meanness and fear, we can feel, truly feel, the connection we all have to the universe and to each other. You know, I don't want to bore you with stories of our outreach into the prison, but I do want to give you one more example of how palpable and tangible is the energy we radiate. At the beginning of every new set of 12 classes, I promise every new cohort, cohort on the first day of class 
that barring a national disaster, such as a hurricane or an earthquake, or my being confined to bed by the doctor, which would be a tall order, I, I will be there on a Tuesday at 1 o'clock for class. That is my promise I give them. I also tell them that I do a prayer for each of them individually by name every morning at about 4.30 in my prayer work. And by the way, I also give, give this gift of prayer to all participants in our Science of Mind classes here at the temple, the ones that I teach. So if you sign up for a class, it's not just the class you're signing up for. You're signing up for, for the 12 or, or 10 or 12 or 14 weeks of class, daily prayer work by moi. So one Tuesday, come to class. <laughs> one Tuesday, I turned up at 1 o'clock. This was about the middle of last year. And there was, I'm told, at the, the first checkpoint that we have to go through, I'm told that there will be no class today. There is industrial action. And when there's industrial action among the officers, then all the people will get, get locked away, and there will be no class. So I said, OK, I've learned to take things in my stride. And I said, just tell our guys that I'll be here next week, knowing fully well that nobody's going to tell anybody anything. But I just said, see you next week. And off I went. Well, the following week, as soon as they started arriving for class, I didn't even wait for Reverend Michael to arrive and to do the opening treatment. One of the participants tackled me, quote, I thought you said that barring a national disaster, you would be here on Tuesday to conduct class. You weren't here last week. Well, before I could answer, another participant said, he was here, my youth. Him did keep him promise. So I said, how the hell you know that I was here? The officer at the gate told you? He, he smiled. And he said, no, Rev, nobody told me. But when you come on the compound, the energy changes. You said, what? Me said, rotted. <laughs> Bad words in my mouth become sanctified. <laughs> I was so, so astonished at this statement that I decided to pursue it a little further. So I said, hmm, energy. What does this energy feel like? How do you tune into it? And well, friends, there was a long pause as he contemplated how to describe this energy. And then he said, it feels like love. It's not one or two Tuesdays I ball at the prison, you know. OK. It feels like love. There are 1,600 people in this facility, plus officers and um, you know, war wardens and so on. And he said, you and Reverend Michael broadcast happiness. My title of my talk, Scatter Joy. We are scattering who we are, and from our heart space, we are broadcasting all the time. We really are broadcasting and receiving stations of the energy that we carry here, whether it be anxiety and fear, animosity and judgment, or it be love and laughter and joy. The late 19th century, early 20th century Bengali poet Rabindranath Tagore wrote, and I quote, the same stream of life that runs through my veins day and night runs through the world and dances in rhythmic measures. It's the same life that shoots in joy through the dust of the earth in numberless blades of grass and breaks into tumultuous waves of leaves and flowers." Unquote. As you drive up this morning, look at the Bogan Villas along the fence line that are, were broken into tumultuous waves of leaves and flowers. Look around at your, at your temple of light, center for spiritual living, and answer to that invitation from Courtney and Gilles Luanda, our Ministry of the Environment this morning, to come and be a part 
of the scattering of that joy in tumultuous waves of God's beauty and God's love as a community. In my own journey to joy, friends, I have been working hard to let go of judgments, to get in touch and stay in touch with the wonder that we are all one. I want to be able to listen with love to a practitioner or a fellow minister or someone in another church sharing from the podium and to not be so critical of a mispronounced word or grammatical error that I lose the beauty and relevance of their message. I want to arrive in a place in consciousness where I can really see that you are me and I am you. And when I truly know this, I will be broadcasting love and scattering joy at a frequency that will touch everyone whom I meet into wholeness. So please turn to your neighbor and say, you are me, I am you, and we is we. Namaste. <laughs> you are me, I am you, we is we. Namaste. <laughs> At JC, my old school, we used to say, we is we and the rest is weevils. <laughs> but we don't have any weevils. We is just we. We are all one. People have asked me, you know, how you can be so joyous. And I hear some people are critical of my laughter. But that's for them, Quente, because I am going to laugh. That is what I am here to do. My answer to people who say, how can you be so joyous when there's so much suffering in the world? Isn't that wearing blinkers? My answer is that like everyone else, I am deeply touched by the appearance of human suffering. In fact, I am so touched by it that I have decided to join with others in a consciousness of love and togetherness because I really believe that by doing this, I do more to create the world of peace, harmony, and justice that we all want rather than by spending endless hours drinking in the horror stories fed in graphic detail by, to our subconscious minds by the news, media, and the social media nowadays. Just clap. So this brings me to your assignment. Today's assignment is inspired by the positive use made of social media by a loving group called the Message Posse, who utilize WhatsApp to share messages of hope and inspiration on a daily basis. Your mission, should you decide to undertake it, is to scatter joy by starting a WhatsApp group of your own. And if you don't have that application, and your phone is like mine, not so smart, simply send a positive text message or email or two to two or three friends, if not daily, even once a week on a Sunday after church. Just link with two or three people by text, or just phone them and say, thinking of you, and here's a thought I got at, at our service this morning, or here's a, a, an affirmation of joy that I want to share with you because you make me so happy. Easy assignment? Easy. Two people say yes. <laughs> Have you ever noticed how feelings and moods can be catching? Why not catch joy and then scatter it, friends? If everyone took the time to rediscover their naturally joyous state of being, we could join together with the ideal of peaceful coexistence in mind and create it for our country and for the world. If we unite with this intention in our hearts, we cannot fail. We must keep doing this until the force field of joy surrounds us all. And believe me, friends, from this state of mind, we can rid the world of many of the adverse attitudes that cause unfavorable situations. Together, we can create an atmosphere of acceptance and tolerance that honors diversity and values all of God's children. My heart tells me that this is a time for gathering together in solidarity and joy in order to alter our present reality as a race. There is already a movement in this direction here in this church as we focus together on our spiritual growth and our evolution into a church without borders.
Our ministers and practitioners have each been given a specific geographic area of Jamaica for which they are asked to pray on a regular basis. In addition, the loving work of our volunteer groups, such as our ministries of hospitality, environment, fund development, music, the word, and peace, these ministries are helping to transform the me factor into a we attitude that is a beatitude of joy and sacred service. And I just want to honor them and to, to just honor all the people who give up their time and their talent and their treasure to the maintenance of this wonderful, wonderful facility we call the Temple of Light Center for Spirit. <laughs> some are out front doing it, you know, um, officially, and some are quietly behind the scenes. Several people brought um, pots of Bougainvilleas last week. You, you, you don't, we don't even know who left them. It's just two pots up here or three or four pots of Bougainvillea up here. It's just wonderful because we have gotten together as a community behind the idea that we can do something to make this a country and indeed a world that works for everyone, not just for a few. The beautiful Jesus gave us a be attitude, that is an attitude to be, to live by. In Matthew 5, 9, he said, blessed are the peacemakers, for, for they shall be called the children of God. The peacemakers, friends, are those who have found the joyous serenity in their own souls. This condition of mind is the objective at which Jesus aims in all the instructions that he gives during his ministry. And you know, he said, my peace I give unto you. He said, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Stop fret. Focus on the joy that is yours by divine right of being. As long as there is fear or resentment or criticism or any trouble in your heart, that is to say, as long as you lack serenity, it is not possible for you to experience, let alone to express joy. The 13th century poet, Rumi, wrote, and I quote, keep knocking, and the joy inside will eventually open a window and look to see who is there, unquote. And as another poet put it, quote, when you finally allow yourself to trust joy and embrace it, you will find you dance with everything. Unquote. I told you at the beginning of my encouragement that I decreed 2015 to be a year of joy. So in, in January, I began, to keep, I began keeping a joy journal. It has been a joyous addition to my daily spiritual practice, and I have so many journals to write in and so many readings to do, I so won't come to work at all. <laughs> but I, I, this joy journal has had a really big impact on me. You see? It's hard to miss the big things or events that bring me joy, like the birthday yesterday of my goddaughter, or the, or the offer of a loved one to fly me to New York to see an exhibition with them. That those are the big things, and they make you feel really good. Even if I don't go to New York, I still feel so wonderful that somebody thought to just make the gesture. But sometimes it's the little things that fly by me, or that I fly by and, and, and not realize. You know, it's a, it's a little things like that make my soul dance, like a bear hug from one of the children on a Sunday morning, or an orchid bloom that spiked after two years of being dormant. I told it one of those sacred words. <laughs> but these joys are experienced and quickly forgotten, or worse yet, as I said, I speed past them at 100 kilometers per hour. And so never really let them into my soul where they can do the healing work. So after starting my joy journal, I find that I'm more open to experiencing the little joys. And they stay with me, becoming a part of the fabric of my life. And by recording my joy, I have, in fact, become more joyful. It doesn't mean that I don't lose it from time to time. I did this morning just before service. But it means that I can recenter right away in the joy that, I, that is essentially the truth of my being. So I decided not to give it to you as an assignment on a lucky, but just to recommend it as a very enriching addition to your spiritual practice. 
If you want to try it, it's really simple and takes only two or three minutes, which is shorter than most commercial breaks on television. Grab a notebook, smartphone, tablet, email, or Word document, even a scrap of paper, and jot down any little things that give you joy or make you smile during the course of your day. For example, I was writing, quote, scrap of paper last night, and my computer left off the S from the word scrap. <laughs> you tell me if God don't have a sense of humor. <laughs> me wanted my study chuckling, so I noted it in my joy journal. You can do it as, as things strike you, or you can reflect on the day overall. But it is important to try to write something for every day, to find some joy in every day of your life. And you can be write a single word, or you can even sketch a doodle. Again, my iPad gave me a moment of joy writing doodle for doodle. <laughs> Gotta love me. Gotta love the technology. Keeping a joy journal will anchor you in joy and get you out of the doodle. Uh, uh, yes. So that's my little um, scrap of advice for you today. Friends, Galatians 5.22 reminds us, and I quote, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, unquote. May the joy that you are bear much fruit, and may God's presence within you make your dance with life a joyous outpouring of untold happiness and blessings. You are me, and I am you. We is we, and there are no weevils. Namaste.